All right. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to 6150. Um, so as you know, this uh, semester is going to be a little bit weird uh, in terms of a hybrid between online and in person. Uh, so I'll, I'll go through all the details. And uh, if you have questions, uh, because I'm going to share my screen, I'm not going to have focus on the Zoom window. Uh, so just unmute yourself and, uh, and, and ask. Uh, you don't uh, have to um, raise your hand or anything like that. I, I'm assuming you can actually unmute. Uh, let me double check. I, yeah. Um, yes, we can unmute. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks for confirming that. Uh, people are still joining, so I'm, I'm just uh, holding off for a second. Okay. All right. Uh, so what we'll do today is um, I'm not going to actually go through the lecture itself. All I'm going to do is uh, go through the course outline. And then the lecture itself, uh, what I've done is I've just took uh, the recording from last term uh, when I taught it. <coughs> and I, uh, I posted that. And so for the first three lectures, uh, you'll just use the recording from last year. And then if in three weeks we go back to in-person, then I'll, I'll switch and I'll, I'll start teaching live. Uh, and if we stay online, then we'll, we'll just continue uh, with the recorded lectures. Um, by using the pre-recorded lectures, it just, it makes it things a little easier first for you, hopefully, because all the lectures are there. Uh, and so you can watch them at any time. Uh, you don't have to, to come here every, you know, every Friday at, at this particular time, you can do it uh, sort of as, as you please. Um, and then it's, uh, it's easier for me because some of the equipment that I use uh, for creating the lectures is, is in my office, unfortunately. And so um, uh, it's easier because I just, I just have uh, all the equipment, uh, or sorry, I have the lectures already canned. So that makes it easier. Okay, uh, so to find the course website, I assume that you already did, uh, otherwise you wouldn't be here, uh, but uh, there's a couple ways you can log into Moodle, uh, it should show up. The other thing you can do is you can navigate over to my website, which you can find just by Googling my name, uh, and then under courses, uh, I have all the courses that I've taught, uh, and so this will uh, take you to Moodle. And uh, before I go there, I'll just note that uh, another thing that might be useful to you is to consult uh, the website from past years. Uh, so all the material is there. Usually I don't use Moodle. I'm only using Moodle this year because uh, when, when we do courses online, they, they like it on Moodle as opposed to on the website. But in past years, uh, I've just had an open website. So if you want to look at the assignments from last year, uh, you want to look at the lectures, read ahead, whatever it is. Uh, all that material is is there for you. Um, so not much has changed uh, for for this iteration of the course. Okay, uh, let me log in. And my phone is upstairs, but I'll fetch this from my watch. So you all saw the second factor that I typed in. You can think in your minds about whether there's a, some sort of security vulnerability with that or not. And uh, that's something that we'll actually cover in the course. We'll, we'll talk a bit about two-factor authentication in uh, th either this week's lecture or, or next week's lecture. Anyways, okay, so once you find yourself on the Moodle, uh, we'll go through the course outline. I'm gonna talk about the project. I put up assignment one already, but I'm not going to talk about it today. Well, I'll talk to you. It's not due for a long time. So I'll talk about it like at, at some future lecture. Um, and then where we're, what we're doing right now is this. Uh, so this is just the overview. And then the actual lecture itself, uh, the video and the notes uh, are posted already. So if you click on the video, it takes you to YouTube and uh, there'll be a playlist uh, of all the videos. So this is for this week, this is for next week, and this is for the week after. So you can uh, watch ahead if you want. Uh, and then the notes are here. Uh, I handwrite all my notes, so there's no slides. Uh, if we were doing this in person, you would see me actually write it out. Uh, and um, last year, there was a weird glitch where 
uh, the projector wasn't working for the first class. So uh, the first lecture is kind of weird because I'm actually not writing out the notes. I'm, I'm using the previous year's notes, kind of like slides. But anyways, uh, once you get into lecture two and three, it goes back to sort of normal. If we go back to in-person, uh, I will still record a video, uh, just like the videos that you're watching from last term, uh, they'll be made available to you uh, to watch. Uh, and so you don't strictly have to go to class. Uh, you can, a lot of people just uh, will watch the videos instead. I will say though that the videos, I try and do it. Uh, and, you know, so far I've, I've luckily uh, not had any problems with, um, you know, some sort of glitch or something like that. But if, if it were the case that the recording didn't work or something like that, technically you are responsible uh, for the material. And so, so there is an onus on you to come to class. Uh, but like I've said, I've, I've taught courses, you know, many courses a term for the last, I don't know how many years, and I've never really lost the lecture. It happened once actually where I lost it, but someone else, a student had been recording it. So I was able to uh, splice it together. But, uh, and, and the other thing too, is that you, you always have the material from previous years. And so, uh, the material doesn't change that much from year to year. And so I'm, I'm sure you could, uh, you know, you could catch up uh, if you miss the lectures. Okay, so uh, so what will happen, for example, uh, well, let's just skip that. Let's uh, go over to the course outline then. And uh, I'll pick up this as we go through. Um, okay, so my name's Jeremy Clark. Uh, you can call me Jeremy. Uh, you can call me Professor Clark, whatever you're comfortable with, but Jeremy is is fine. Uh, if we resume lectures, uh, they'll be in person, uh, and this is not right. Hold on. Uh, uh, sorry, I have the, uh, somehow I, I didn't put up the newest version of the course outline. Uh, I will correct that. So I'm going to show you on my screen uh, the newest, uh, there's a few tweaks to it. Uh, to the course outline. And then uh, I'll, I'll, after this class, I'll replace the PDF. So what you'll see on the screen is going to be a little bit different uh, than the PDF. I apologize for that. Unless if maybe I didn't just didn't change it. Sorry, I. Uh, maybe somehow glitched over the file. Um, oh yeah, okay. So this is what the course outline should look like. Uh, although this is wrong. Somehow I, I had two versions. I had the old version and the new version. And so I put some changes. Anyways, I'm going to get all of this resolved, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll go through uh, this course outline. And, and uh, after this call, I'll, I'll make sure I put up the correct version of the course outline. So apologies for that. Okay, so as I said, my name's Jeremy. Uh, we're actually in FG building. Uh, and so that's only if, if things uh, resolve. I will have office hours. Uh, so every Thursday at one o'clock, uh, they'll be on Zoom. And an office hour is if you have like a one-on-one -on -one kind of question. What I'm also going to do for the first three weeks is because the lectures are pre-recorded during this time, we'll also have an office hour that's like a question and answer period. So the difference between the two is uh, every Friday, as, as long as we're online, every Friday you can come at, uh, at 5.45 p.m. and we'll have a Zoom call and you can ask me any questions you have about the lectures themselves uh, because, because they're pre-recorded, you can't ask them live. Uh, and so that, it, that session will be for that. Uh, once we switch to in-person, then that session will go away. But then in addition to that, I also have office hours, which is more like, like if you had a question about your project and you don't wanna ask it in front of the whole class, uh, that, that type of thing. Uh, or you have some something that's like more personal or something like that that you need to discuss. Uh, so then you can show up to office hours. Office hours, I'll try and keep the Zoom link the same. And so you'll just show up and uh, you'll be put in a waiting room and then I'll, I'll, I'll deal with you sort of one by one as if you were lined up outside of my office. Uh, I will also say that office hours will be virtual even if we go back to in-person. Um, so if we do lectures in person, that's fine, but the office hours will always stay on Zoom for the for this whole for this whole semester. 
Uh, the course website you can find by following the links from here, or you can find it by logging into Moodle. Uh, yeah, the course website will have a bunch of things. Uh, these are the topics uh, that we'll cover. Uh, if you want to see, you can see the first couple by uh, viewing the lectures that are there today. And uh, if you ever want to read ahead or, or maybe you're taking the course and you're not sure if you want to stay in it or uh, you're not sure if like you have the right prerequisites or, or that type of thing. If you ever want to skip ahead, you can go over to last year's website uh, and then you can at least go through the notes or you can watch the videos or whatever and, and get a sort of sense about uh, what what's going to get covered in the course and the level of detail and, and those types of things. Uh, there's no formal prerequisites for the course. OK, so I'm not going to assume that you've taken anything. Uh, I do recommend it for security students as opposed to quality students. Uh, this is for people that are NCIS. Some of you may not be, uh, you might be in CS or, or software engineering or even from, not from Concordia. Um, but uh, for those of you that are in CIS, uh, it is recommended for security. I've had quality students take it uh, before and it's fine, but sometimes they, they're, they're sort of missing some of the basics or, or it's a little hard uh, for them. They, don't, they just don't know off the top of their head some of the things that, that we talk about. And so uh, that can be corrected just by doing some reading. Uh, if, if there's some concept and you're not familiar with it, you can Google it and things like that. So uh, if you're in quality, you should prepare yourself to do a little bit of extra work, uh, but it's not a course that, that you know, quality students haven't taken in the past and, and done well in. So it's, it's not impossible for you to take. Uh, the schedule itself is penciled in on Moodle. Uh, so you can see uh, sort of week by week uh, what we'll do. Uh, there's no textbook. Uh, what I haven't said is uh, um, this course is a little weird. It's it's kind of a uh, it's a set of distinct topics. They all have to do with security evaluation. That's why they're in the course. Uh, but it's it's actually a bunch of different topics. And each topic that we cover could have a textbook itself, and a lot of them actually do. And so what I'll do is I'll I'll read a textbook. And instead of giving an entire course on a topic, I'll just give one lecture or maybe two or three lectures on that topic. So uh, there are textbooks that correspond uh, to the material that we will cover, but you are not required to read them. You're only required to, to know what was said in the lecture itself. That said, if you want that background information, maybe you're interested in it for a project, uh, maybe you're not quite following it and you want to hear someone else explain it, those types of things, then the, the textbooks are there for you to, to take a look at. Uh, most of them are available uh, in the library. Uh, some of them are even free and online. And so you'll notice that in Moodle, um, uh, for, for every lecture, there'll be like additional materials. So for example, the lecture today is on Stride and that comes out of this book called Threat Modeling. Uh, and I'll maybe have to go through these links and make sure they actually work. Uh, that, that I was trying to link you actually directly to Concordia's library so you could get a copy of it, but anyways. Um, okay, uh, so that's the textbook. Um, the other thing I'll, I'll, I'll notice, there's a slight distinction. You're responsible for what was said in class. So I do write down all the important things, but sometimes I'll say something and I won't write it down or it will end up in a drawing or something like that. So I'm not saying that you're only responsible for what's written down in the lecture notes. You're actually responsible for everything that was said in the lecture as well. So if something said, and it's not uh, it's not written down. Uh, you know, it's still fair game to ask on an exam. Uh, that said, I do try to write down everything that is important. Uh, this is just like something we have to write into the course outlines. Uh, as you know, I'll be recording the lectures and I'll be giving you uh, the notes from the lectures themselves. And so you should be able to follow along without any problem uh, if you have to miss a lecture for some reason. Uh, but but technically, like legally or whatever, you're required uh, to, to attend the lectures. Okay, the grade distribution will be uh, the same as it always is. I don't do a midterm in this class. I just have a final exam. It's worth half of your mark. Uh, you'll have a project, which I'll talk about later. Uh, it's worth 30%. You'll have two assignments. So it'll each be worth 10%. Uh, assignment one will be due in about a month. And then assignment two will be due like in the second half of the term. Now. The university doesn't like uh, having final exams that are worth like 50% if we have a virtual exam writing session, which is a possibility. So 
what I've done here is I've just put a note that uh, assuming that we can have an in-person final exam, like we all go back to Concordia, say in two weeks, like the original plan, then it will just be as normal. Uh, but if like, say at the, in three weeks, they say, oh, actually this entire semester is gonna be virtual. Then I might revisit this uh, having just one exam. Uh, what I might do is I might split the material up and give you quizzes uh, throughout the term. Uh, and then still have like some quiz at the end that's maybe worth more marks. Uh, that that's sort of like a final. So um, the reason they do that is is because uh, uh, with virtual exams, if something goes wrong, it's like half of your marks, right? And so uh, they it's just a way of sort of distributing the risk of of there being technical issues or other types of issues uh, with the exam writing. Okay, so uh, final exam only a final exam if it looks like in about three weeks that we can hold that final exam in person. And if it looks like in about three weeks that we cannot, I will revise the course outline and I'll, I'll be telling you about it and, and making it clear on Moodle that uh, there, there might be some uh, tests that are distributed uh, throughout. In those cases, they'll just be on Moodle. Uh, there'll be multiple choice and, and that's it. Um, uh, yeah, so, so these are things that, that you should probably know. Uh, I'll talk a bit about plagiarism a little bit in a little bit more detail when I talk about the project. Um, and so, yeah, okay. Uh, actually, well, I'll, I'll just cover it now. Uh, so plagiarism is basically uh, copying material, presenting material that's not your own as if it is your own. So in this course, it usually shows up in one of two places. Uh, one of them is with your project and one's with your assignments. With your assignments, it's really simple. You have to do them individually. Okay, so you can't copy off of a friend or have your friend do half and you do the other half and then you swap. Uh, so you do the whole assignment, that type of thing. So I expect you uh, to do the assignments yourself. And uh, the assignments are very flexible. And so lots of everyone will come up with slight variations, hopefully. Uh, so it's, it's not like yes, no questions where like there's, there's set answers. And so we'll be looking to see that, that your assignment looks like it was uh, completed individually. Uh, with your projects, uh, the main issue is uh, plagiarism itself. And so plagiarism would be uh, like if you copy uh, something that someone else has written and you put it in your project report. And so to prevent that, uh, what I suggest you do is, first off, never you should never just copy and paste something into your document. Sometimes you copy and paste it in with the intention of rewriting it, but then maybe you forget. Uh, and so that, that would be very problematic. Uh, sometimes people will uh, think it's sufficient to just rewrite the grammar. So the sentence is copied from somewhere else. The ideas are articulated exactly the same way, but they just change the wording. So it's not an exact copy. That is still considered plagiarism. You're plagiarizing the, the, uh, the arguments and the order that they're being given and, and the logic of what's being said, even if you're not word for word. Uh, using what's been used. Okay, so the best thing to do is when you read some material and you want to use it uh, or use the knowledge that's contained into it, just read it, take some notes, whatever. And then when you write what you want to write in your project, like close the document, don't even have it open, uh, don't have any verbatim text or anything like that, and just summarize it based on your notes. Uh, and if you do that, then, then you'll be fine. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can cite where you're getting the material from. And so uh, what I like to see in projects is a liberal use of citation. So don't be scared uh, to cite a lot. It's okay if like almost every other sentence has a citation after it, if, if that's the type of thing that you're doing. Um, so you can, and you can also say uh, your writing doesn't have to be formal. Uh, so what you can do is you can say in a very conversational style, like, um, you know, there's this paper, you know, by these authors in this year or whatever, however you want to cite it with a citation. And you can say, hey, they present a framework that has these five properties. And then you list the five properties. And so when, when I read that sentence, it's clear, oh, these aren't five properties you made up, it's five properties that came out of the paper, okay? So you can just say it in words in the document, like if you're getting something from somewhere else. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Um, uh, 
And then, uh, sorry, I'm just going to grab a drink. Just give me one minute. Okay, better. Um, the other, okay, so academic integrity includes plagiarism, and then there's other forms of cheating as well. And so in exams, uh, what will happen is uh, I'll give you a semi-open book exam. This will also depend on whether it's held in person or not. Uh, if we do a virtual exam, it will actually be fully open book. Uh, so you can look at whatever material you want to look at, uh, you can have your browser open, you can Google things uh, during the exam. Uh, the one thing that you are not allowed to do is, is ask other students uh, for help on the questions. Uh, if it's an in-person exam, uh, what I'll do is I'll give you one sheet of paper where you can write whatever you want on it. I don't do fully open book exams because it just, it ends up being too much stuff. Like people have books and papers and people are shuffling and looking for stuff and things like that. So you, you bring one piece of paper, it's very clean, uh, but whatever you wanna write on it, you can put the course notes on it or, or whatever, whatever you wanna put. Anything that you think you might need to memorize, uh, you can put on that piece of paper and then you'll have it uh, for reference. So hopefully, you know, people aren't going to the bathroom and looking at their phone and things like that because whatever they're looking up hopefully is already on that piece of paper. Uh, obviously, you cannot uh, talk to other people uh, when you're writing an exam, and uh, even if you're asking for like to borrow a pencil or, or something like that, you should put your hand up, ask the professor or the supervisor uh, of the exam, uh, and then they'll facilitate you to borrow a pencil from your friend or whatever the case may be. Okay, um, and yeah. So, anyways, we'll we'll cross this bridge uh, when it happens uh, in terms of what the final exam will look like, uh, but, but uh, you can expect something that, that's at least semi-open book, uh, if not fully open book. Uh, this stuff is just sort of boilerplate uh, text. Uh, so you are expected to attend every class, uh, although I will make every effort to, to make a, a video of every lecture and make it available to you on the course website. Um, there's a, a set of links here. Uh, so if you're having problems with, with anything, so it could be related to the course, uh, but it also uh, might have to do with uh, anything with your life as a student at Concordia, uh, there's a set of resources here. And so you can go through them and, um, and uh, use them as, as it is relevant for you. Okay, so that's uh, what I wanted to say about the course outline. Why don't we pause here? If you have a question, just unmute yourself and, and ask, and uh, we'll, we'll get those questions out of the way. Okay, so hearing none, uh, that's all right. Uh, if a question comes to you, once again, just feel free to interrupt. Uh, you don't have to. Uh, wait for me. Okay, so the other thing I'll, I'll talk about today is the project. And once again, I somehow managed to have last year's version up. Okay, so uh, this I will, uh, I, I have to replace the PDF that's on Moodle again. I accidentally uploaded uh, last year's uh, project description, um, uh, but we'll, we'll go through it. Um, okay, so your, your project uh, will be due on the last day of class. 
uh, to submit your assignments and your projects, you're going to use a system called EAS. Uh, EAS is located at this URL. You need to be a student of ENCS and have like their version of a net name in order to log in. You may not be in that, that position. Uh, so if you're not and you don't have access to the system, then you should start working on getting access as soon as possible. I believe uh, you just open a ticket at uh, support and eventually they'll, they'll, they'll link you up uh, to the right thing. Um, so when you submit it uh, to EAS, it just asks you to upload. Uh, and then there's different categories. Uh, so for the assignments, you'll choose assignment. Uh, for project, uh, you'll choose project itself, and then you'll upload it. Um, there's some requirements here. So I, I'd like it in PDF, not a doc format. Uh, I'd like you, if you uh, have your student number, to name the PDF according to your student number. And if there's more than one of you uh, working as a team, uh, then just you can append uh, or prepend, sorry, uh, different student numbers with a underscore between them. Uh, if you are working in a group, only one group member has to upload it. Just make it clear on the document itself who the members of the group are. And it doesn't matter who uploads it as long as one of you uh, uploads it. And yeah. Okay, so the project itself uh, will just be a written report. Uh, and so it will be uh, no more than eight pages and it will be on a topic that's related uh, to security. And particularly, I want you to focus on security evaluation. So you might not know what evaluation means until we get two, three lectures into the course. Um, but you can think of security evaluation as why do we know that something is secure? So if I, if I assert that something's secure, like what's that has to be based on something, right? So what was the, um, the process that went into making the security claim itself, not just what strictly is the security claim, uh, but, but why do we believe it's secure? Um, and so, uh, so, so there needs to be a component of evaluation uh, to it. Uh, there's two types of reports that you can do. One is you can propose something new. Uh, so you could either propose a new security solution and then evaluate it, uh, or you could propose a new evaluation method for evaluating security. So those are, are the two, and that's not necessarily inclusive of everything, uh, but you could do something that's sort of novel. Uh, the other thing you can do is uh, what's closer to a survey uh, where you're looking at other people's work and you're trying to summarize it. And I'm gonna be a little nitpicky about the difference between what's called the systemization of knowledge and a survey. I'll talk about it in a second, um, but, but yeah, you can do that type of thing. Uh, the project can be done individually, or you can do groups of people, so two people, three people, four people. Uh, however, if you're doing three, four people, I really expect something that's much better than something that one person could have written by themselves. Um, your uh, maximum is eight pages. The reason is there's 70 of you, you're all going to submit something that's eight pages. That's like reading a textbook for me uh, at the end of the term. And so it takes me like weeks to, you know, read everything. Uh, and so I, that's why the, the page limit has to be there. Uh, this also is a maximum. So you, you can write less than eight pages. It doesn't have to be uh, fully eight pages. And uh, maybe I'll add this here. Uh, I'll, I'll say of content, meaning like your bibliography or your title page or whatever like that doesn't necessarily count uh, for those eight pages. Um, uh, that said, don't include a title page. I think I have it here. Uh, you just put title, put the students and their IDs, and then you can just start your report. Uh, you don't have to do a title page. And you can use any template you want as long as it's reasonable. You know, I don't, I don't really care what it looks like. And plagiarism, we just talked about. Uh, and so, yeah, make sure that you understand, uh, especially if you're doing more of the survey type of thing. Uh, you can't even borrow people's, like, articulations of ideas, you have to really express it in your own terms. Uh, so you have to rewrite the idea for, for someone else. Okay, so if you wanna go down the venue, or sorry, the avenue of, uh, of doing a paper that's based on other people's research, uh, what I'd like is, uh, I'd like what's called a systemization of knowledge. And so a systemization of knowledge is a little bit different than a survey. So 
if I was writing a survey, usually surveys are written kind of chronologically. So you might say, okay, I have a survey, it's on a particular topic. And you know, the first person to talk about it was this person and this is what they said. And then there's the second person and they said this. And then there's the third person and they said that, okay? Uh, what I want instead is I want you to take all three ideas and put them sort of on equal footing and actually compare them uh, between each other. So pretend all of them were written at the same time. And the person who wrote the first paper, they don't know, they can't respond to the person who wrote the third paper because the third paper was written, you know, a couple of years after. But what would that person say, right? What would they say about the third paper? If the third paper says, oh, we do something that the first paper didn't, is that actually true? Okay, another thing about a systemization of knowledge is um, with a survey, you're just summarizing what other people say. In a systemization, you're thinking critically about what they said, and you're asking yourself, is, is what they said actually true or not? Right? It's possible that, that uh, they make claims, or maybe they miss things. Right? And so they say, you know, our, our system is great. Uh, it has these five properties, but they don't tell you the, the property that it's missing. Uh, and so that's the idea of an SOK, really, is, is to, to try and uh, fairly evaluate all the different works. And it's more like a textbook. So in a textbook, you, you know, if you pick up a textbook, it's about teaching you the idea. It's not about, uh, you know, giving you the history of the idea, like this person did it. Sometimes there might be like a paragraph or something like that, that kind of gives you the history. Uh, but, you know, but the idea is to, to, to communicate it in a way that the reader can understand. Okay, so that's the idea of an SOK is that you should, uh, you pick your topic, and then uh, you write it in a way that the reader can understand. The reader doesn't care, you know, who wrote what about it. They just want to understand uh, what, what the actual topic is itself. Uh, if you're looking at other papers, uh, there's no restriction or requirement on anything. Uh, and so you, you don't even have to use papers. Uh, you should, I, I would encourage you to, to try and include a few academic papers. Uh, but if there's some reason why you can't, uh, the main reason would be that you want to write about a topic that's so like cutting edge and new uh, that that they're just academics haven't caught up, right? Uh, academic papers take maybe a year to publish. And so if you're writing about like something that's that's really, you know, something that happened in the last year or a new development or a new idea that came out in the last year, there might not be academic papers on it. And in that case, it's fine to talk about blog posts or, you know, posts on Medium or, or whatever. Uh, GitHub pages or, or whatever the case may be. Wherever you're getting the knowledge from, it's okay to cite it, but you're responsible for, basically, if you assert something's true in your report, you know, you're responsible for, for actually having validated that to the extent that you can anyways. And you can always write in a report like, so-and-so is claiming this, we, you know, we weren't able to validate it. I don't have the background to know whether it's true or not, but, you know, according to them, uh, this is the case, right? So, so whatever you think of the paper, you can just say very plainly uh, in the paper itself. But anyways, uh, academic papers tend to be peer reviewed. That doesn't mean uh, that they're, they're perfect or they're flawless, right? Sometimes papers get through the review process and uh, they, you know, they actually have a flaw in it and just no one caught it. Uh, the other thing is that academic venues, there's different kind of tiers or, or like in terms of how good they are. And so the top tier conferences, the papers are very vetted very carefully. But then there's other conferences where there's basically no vetting or, uh, you know, basically if you pay the fee, then you can publish there and they're not even really peer reviewed. Um, and for you as students, it's really hard to know the difference uh, between them. And you can ask me questions about it if, if you're stuck or, or something like that. Um, one tool that's very useful, I highly recommend is Google Scholar. Uh, so it's a good search engine. Uh, you can type in different topics that you're interested in. It will find you papers. And one of the things it does is it tells you how many people have cited the paper. That is not a perfect measure, but it, it is a meaningful measure, I would say, of, of trying to sort out. If you don't know anything else about like what's a good conference, what's a bad conference, the citation count is, is, is reasonable, right? So uh, when you look at your topic, you'll see uh, papers and, and then try and concentrate more on the highly cited papers uh, as opposed to the lowly cited. It doesn't mean you can't include it if there's no citations or if there's you know a small set of citations, uh, but just be more skeptical of the paper uh, if there's less. Another reason there might be less citations is it's brand new. Uh, so, so if it's a paper from 2022, uh, then, then you can expect that there's not gonna be a lot of citations. 
Okay. Another trick you can do is uh, when you read academic papers, the onus is on the author to say what's new in their paper. And in order to do that, they have to summarize what other people have done. And so uh, let's say you, you pick up a paper and you just want to get the, the idea, the gist of it in uh, five minutes. You don't want to spend you know, a long time reading the paper. What you could do is find a newer paper that cites it and see how that newer paper describes it. Right, because they, they might have a paragraph about the paper instead of you know reading the entire paper. So if you read papers that are sort of connected by citations, you can see how people are describing the other papers, and it, it helps you uh, try and understand what what papers are about. Uh, in terms of topics, it doesn't matter. It has to have an evaluation, so it has to, a security about. So obviously, it has to be a security. It's a security course, but it has to have that evaluation criteria. Beyond that, I don't care what you're evaluating, okay? It can be literally anything. It can be software, it can be hardware, it can be web, it can be networks, it can be, I don't know, uh, physical things. Uh, it can be people, social engineering, usability, uh, like, like and, and sometimes if you pick some weird thing that most people don't really think about from a security perspective, that might be a, an interesting paper because not a lot of people are looking at it. So the topic is wide open. Um, uh, so you can choose whatever you want, you know, try and be uh, creative. I guess that's the last point here. <coughs> um, in terms of my role, uh, so I'm here to help you, uh, uh, you know, as you need it. But you don't have to talk to me ever. Like you can uh, just show up on the last day of class, submit your project, having never spoken to me, and that's fine too. Okay. So I'm, I'm here to help. I'm, I'm happy to help you. Uh, you know, if, if you're having trouble choosing a topic or if you're looking at papers and you're trying to sort through them or whatever, whatever you need my help with, uh, I'm happy, but there's, there's no requirement to. Uh, the topic itself, you can choose, the groups you can choose. You don't have to register your topic with me. I don't have to approve it. Um, if you're worried about whether it fits, then ask me and I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, but you, it doesn't, you can change your topic like the day before it's due uh, and it doesn't matter and you can change the composition of your group or team or, or whatever the case may be. I hope you're not writing your report the day before, but anyways, uh, uh, so, so it's, um, it's, there's no, like, there's no uh, setting your topic or anything like that. Uh, just when the projects do, you have a project in hand and I'll mark whatever you have. Um, one thing that students do sometimes is they, you know, it gets close to the end of the term and they're like, uh, can I send you a draft? Of my project and can you read it and, and give me feedback that's one thing i won't do it's just too much work uh for me and if all 70 students ask for it uh there's no way i can i can possibly do that so uh what i'll do is uh, if you if you ever ask me something and you want to show me your report i'll look at it for two minutes and that's it so i'll time bucket two minutes and whatever i can glean out of looking at it for two minutes and whatever suggestions I can give to you, I'll, I'll do that. Uh, but beyond that, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to, I, I can't just read a report and, and tell you what your mark would be and what to fix and, and all that type of thing. That's the onus is on you to, uh, to try and work on that. Okay, uh, another thing, uh, this is a tip more than uh, a requirement, but this tends to work very well is if you think of your research topic as a question. So like, what is the best way to do X, Y, Z, or, um, you know, why is it that, you know, X, Y, Z is, is prevalent or um, what are the security considerations of X, Y, Z? I don't, I don't know. Uh, those are sort of vague, but if you phrase it as a question, then it's very clear what your report is. Your report is an answer to the question. Um, you read some academic papers and you're like, do I need to cite them or do I include them? Well, does it help you answer the question? If they're talking about your general topic, but they're not actually answering the question that you have, then no, don't include them, right? So it gives you a very clear criteria for what you include and what you don't include. Um, so phrasing your project topic as a question and then writing an answer uh, is, it just, it tries, it keeps you uh, sort of like, on a very natural approach, uh, and it tends to lead to a better project. Uh, the, the problem is sometimes people choose projects and uh, they it just ends up being sort of random, like 
three random things about this topic, but there's no like real connection uh, between them. Uh, or sometimes people choose projects that are just way too wide. Like, I don't know, what's better from a security perspective, Android or, or iOS, Mac OS, well, iOS, they call it. Um, and uh, it's just too broad. Like an operating system is too complicated. There's too many different aspects to it. You could do that project if you narrowed it, right? You said, well, what's better, like the code signing by the kernel in iOS or the code signing by the kernel in, in, uh, in Android or something like that. Like, like you'd have to narrow that down. But an operating system is like just way too broad. There's too many different things. You can't possibly compare them. So um, yeah, so for projects, try and choose something more narrow, more narrow. Even if you start with an idea, uh, try always try and narrow it. Uh, and then uh, it's better to go in depth on something narrow than, than to try and cover too much. And then it's not really great uh, because uh, you missed too much or you weren't able to, to give it the depth that it deserved. Uh, the references themselves, you don't have to follow any particular format. As long as I can look at the reference and know what, if I can Google and find the thing that you're referencing, then it's fine. Uh, it doesn't have to follow a particular format. Uh, the marks are, are sort of roughly like this. Um, so 20 marks will be on uh, what I call scope and execution. This is really on like getting a good project topic. A good project topic is actually like, is almost as important as the report itself, okay? So you, you wanna get a good topic. It should be interesting, uh, important, timely. Uh, you, uh, and then the flow of the paper should be logical. So it should be organized. Uh, it should be organized in a way that, that say if your topic is a question that, that actually answers the question or uh, if it's uh, not phrased as a question, it should be logical why something's included and why something is included and uh, how you're going through the material, okay? Um, it should be complete. You shouldn't miss things. Uh, and then it should be appropriate to a course on security evaluation, okay? So that's sort of in scope and execution. Uh, interpretation is, I'm gonna read your report and I'm gonna say, does this person actually understand what they're writing? So it's very easy to sort of parrot what other people write. Like you can read a paper, not really understand it, but just sort of repeat back what that paper says. You can do it in your own words, right? But you don't really understand it, okay? And so interpretation, I'm trying to think about like, it, does this person actually understand it? And a signal that you understand it is that you explain it differently than it's been explained before, or you, um, you have, uh, you know, it, it's really clear uh, and it's clear that you didn't miss things and, and you're like, okay, it's very logical in terms of how you go through uh, the material. I, I don't know, this one's hard. It's easy for me to, to sort of pick up on because I've read lots of projects. It's hard for me to articulate to you, but uh, you don't have to worry so much on, on how you do it. Just worry about really understanding what you're talking about. If you really understand what you're talking about and you're explaining it in your own words, then it will come across as you understanding it, okay? If you're sort of repeating things that you've read without really understanding them, uh, that, that will also come across. So uh, for this, just concentrate on, on, on really understanding what you're talking about. And once again, it's fine if the topic's really complicated, it's fine that you understand pieces and not other pieces, just say it in the report itself, right? So you can say, okay, we're, I'm going to explain this part because this is the part I really understand. There's this other part. I don't, you know, I don't really understand it fully, but like, this is what other people are saying about it. So, you know, probably it's true. Um, you know, so, so whatever the case may be, as long as you sort of articulate it in the report, it's okay. Uh, technicality is just, you know, it, this is a graduate level course. Uh, so I'm looking for some uh, level of technical knowledge. Uh, it shouldn't be like just like a magazine article, uh, like written, like in that way. Uh, there should be some technical depth. What that means depends on the topic itself. So if it's a crypto, it might be math. If it's software, it could be code. Uh, if it's just describing things, it's at least you're drilling down to the details. You're explaining, you know, like small details uh, very precisely. You're defining things, uh, that type of thing. And then the presentation is just, you know, that that it it looks good. Uh, it's well organized. Uh, it's uh, you know you use sections well. Uh, you have some figures. Uh, try and draw the figures yourself. Don't just copy uh, figures from from other papers. And uh, you cite when you're supposed to cite, and that type of thing. It just looks like it looks like 
a project that uh, you've worked on for a lot of the course. It doesn't look like a project that, that you wrote the day before. It was due. And then uh, outside of these categories, I may make deductions that don't really fit into one of these four categories. The main one that I do is, is just that sometimes projects come in, there's four names on the project and it looks like something that was done by one person. And so then I'll, I'll, I'll make a deduction uh, in that case. Um, so yeah. Okay, uh, any questions on the project? Just feel free to- uh, Hello. Yeah. Hello, Professor. Good evening. Hello. Uh, so I do have a small question I want to clarify. Uh, so I worked on, uh, I published a paper on a zero knowledge protocol. Uh, so it's basically uh, preventing the, the packet dropping attack in Manit. So can I use the same for the project or would you suggest to pick a different one? What do you suggest? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is a good question. And I'll answer it more broadly because sometimes you also do course projects in other courses and, and things like that. So uh, your projects, this doesn't just apply to this course, but every course at Concordia, um, your project should be developed specifically for the course itself. Um, so you can't like post, uh, you can't use multiple projects uh, uh, and submit them to different courses. Uh, in the case of published research, if, if it's already done, it's like completely done, then I would say, no, you can't submit it to the project. But what you can do is you can absolutely use the knowledge that you have. So if you already know a lot about a topic because you've published on it, or maybe because of other courses that you've taken, you can do that to shortcut a lot of the work. So I would still like a project that, that was designed specifically for this course. Maybe you take the paper that you wrote, for example, and you focus more on the evaluation aspect of it. And so you, you kind of blow up that piece of it and then you kind of diminish the others. So you can certainly take that paper and, and sort of fiddle with it to fit the, the course um, if, it, if you haven't used that topic in other courses. Uh, if, if you have one paper and you're, you're writing all your course projects on the same paper, uh, and just tweaking them a little bit, then th that's not acceptable. But uh, so it, based on your specific case, it sounds like you, you, you could tweak it a bit and submit it to this course, assuming that you haven't submitted it to another course. Yes, Professor. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Other questions? It can be about this or the, the course outline or anything like that. Hello, Professor. Um, I was wondering if there's any way we can do live classes. I know we need to watch the pre-recorded ones, but I'm totally free at this time to to have a live class on the normal schedule. Yeah, if because I possible. have the classes already recorded, I'm going to, I'll just give you the recordings themselves. Uh, it's uh, like doing my whole setup is is hard. And when I screen share on Zoom, it like, uh, it often like um, gets really laggy. Uh, you'll see also like some of the lectures it gets laggy just because I'm recording the screen in class, but uh, I'm not confident enough in my own technical setup uh, to, to, to really do it live on Zoom. I'm sure it would go okay, but, but anyways, because I have the, the courses already, I think the benefits outweigh the, the, the costs in terms of doing it. So uh, the answer would be yes, I could in theory do it, but I'm choosing to uh, give you the pre-recorded lectures and then you can at least watch them on, on your own time. And yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. No worries. Okay, other questions? Uh, yeah, is there any deadline for project proposals or? Uh, yeah, so the project the proposal, time. this is sort of what I was trying to cover uh, when I said uh, here, uh, like you don't, you just hand in your project at the end of the term. Uh, so there is no proposal. Uh, you don't have to have me approve your topic. If you want to, like if you're scared that it doesn't fit or something like that, then, then go ahead and ask me. Uh, but yeah, you don't, you, there is no proposal and uh, there's no deadline for it. And you can change your topic at any time and you can change the composition of your team at any time. Okay, sounds good, thank you. I 
I guess there's some questions in the chat too. So the two have been asked and once one person's asking if two people would be a good team. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's fine. Yeah. So usually I, the way I would approach a team is, is like, can, is there some reason why this person like could do something that I can't do or, or some topics too, they're, they're more logical to split up, right? Like, like there's two different aspects to the project. So it's sort of like, okay, you study the one and I'll study the other. Um, in some cases they just have complementary skills. Uh, and th that applies to three or four as well. You know, um, sometimes people do implementations, uh, and that's fine. You can implement something. I still need a written report. So the written report won't be your code. It will be a description of what you did. If you want to link to your code, you can throw it up on GitHub and, and put a link in the report. Uh, but that's an example where maybe someone has the conceptual idea and someone else is better at programming. And so they just want to code it. Um, so, but, but anyways, yeah. So working with, as, with a pair or a team uh, is perfectly fine. Uh, but, but yeah, there should be a reason for it. Uh, and you shouldn't just, uh, do something that you would do on your own and then, you know, have your friends who didn't have a good idea, just sort of add, you know, staple their names onto the end of, of the report. Cause that could hurt you, uh, yourself, uh, because it will dilute, uh, the amount of work that, that you did amongst more participants. And I'm going to be looking specifically at that when I mark. Other questions? Uh, can you talk about SOK once again, systemization of knowledge? Uh, sure, sure. Different. So you can think of it as like a survey. We just don't like to use the word survey because a survey is sort of, it's a survey I, in my mind is like, this person said this, then this person wrote this, and then this person did this. So it's more like the history of an idea. So what I want you to do is communicate the idea and not bog yourself down with the history of the idea. And so like it, it, a quintessential survey paper would be, I'm doing a topic, I, whatever topic you want to choose. I don't like giving any examples because then people like to use them for their actual projects. So, but whatever, you, you do a project and then you're like, okay, I went to Google Scholar, I looked it up and I found three papers, all right? And so my project report is these three papers. Like this paper said this, like the first section is the paper, the second section is the second paper, third section is the third paper. And it's just sort of like, okay, this paper is about this, this paper is about this, this paper is about this. Maybe at the end, there's some sort of conclusion that tries to tie it all together. I don't want that. What I want you to do is tie it all together throughout the paper itself. Okay, so um, yeah, so so that's that's basically it. So think more like a textbook chapter where you're trying to actually communicate the idea. And if you read a textbook, you don't care did that come from one paper or five papers and which paper did that come from? Like, like, it's just not something that you care about. You just care about learning what it is that the, the author is trying to teach you. And so I want your reports to be similar. I want you to try and teach me or the reader. Another thing too, uh, this is sort of a side trail, but uh, who do you write it for? That also is up to you. So you can write a paper that's, it, it's up to you and you should communicate it in the paper itself. Right, so a good paragraph to have somewhere near the start of your paper is like, we assume the reader is familiar with X, Y, and Z, right? So if you wanna like write some deep paper and you know, in eight pages, you can't possibly summarize like all the background that you would have to in order to communicate the idea that you want to, then you just write that. You just say, okay, this is a paper and the, you know, the audience is, the intended audience you know, is someone that already knows all about these ideas, right? And uh, I'll mark it to the best of my ability. If, if I mark, meet the target audience, that's great. If I don't, I mean, I've, I haven't had a problem in the past, uh, but you know, if, I, if I got really stuck, I could ask a colleague or something like that to, to try and evaluate it. Um, so yeah, so, so think about who you're writing for. It doesn't matter who you're writing for, just tell me who that person is. Uh, and then write it so that they understand the topic. Don't write it as like a history of the different people that wrote stuff about it. Does that make so sense it, more or less? So, so it's more like making a complex sentence out of the three research papers and make it look like a one instead of having three different sentences. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, sort of. So it, it's not really at the sentence level, but it's sort of like you take this one idea that, that goes across all three papers and you just communicate that idea as opposed to talking about each 
yeah like right like to give a normal uh, crack sort of all of the all those trees yeah yeah okay sounds good Uh, someone asked about uh, the whether the projects will be presented or not. So they will not be presented. So uh, it's just a written report, and then that's that's it. There's no presentation uh, of it. So on the deadline day, you'll upload your PDF, uh, and then and, and that's all there is to it. Okay. Any any final questions? Okay, so when will I see you again? I'll see you again at this time, same time next week, same link, or at least I'll, I'll put the link on uh, on Moodle. So just click it, it probably will be the same. But um, And that session is only to ask your questions about the lecture itself. So if you watch the lecture this week, or if you're, if you're going ahead, it's fine to ask questions in advance as well. Um, so uh, everyone, uh, before next week, find time to watch the first lecture here, Lecture One Stride. If you have questions about this lecture, then uh, this time next week, uh, you can ask those questions. So I'll open the call up. Sometimes there's no questions and it's over in five minutes. And sometimes there's lots of questions and it takes an hour. Um, but, but anyways, uh, I'll, I'll be here. Uh, to, to answer your question. And once again, these are, are questions like for everyone. So you'll ask it in front of everyone and I'll, I'll answer it in front of everyone. And if you have questions that are um, individual, uh, then you can come to office hours. And so uh, office hours, uh, maybe I'll, I'll try and put office hours. I'll, I'll, I'll add the Zoom link uh, to the, at least to the course outline and, and uh, if I remember, I'll, I'll try and put it in every week as well. So you can just, you can find it on a week by week basis. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks everyone. And I hope you enjoy the course and I'll see you uh, here next week. Bye. Thank Bye. you, Professor. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor.